Hari Om. Namaste to everyone, to all the Atma Jyotis. Uh, welcome to Vidya Ji, Sharda Ji and Shaila Ji. Uh, they have joined us uh, recently uh, from this session to Nisargadatta ABSC. Um, we will, uh, we are expecting Narsim Murthy Ji also to join. He is also joined newly to the group. Uh, hopefully he will join soon. But let us begin with the prayer and people can join in as, as they come. Um, so, uh, is this AVSC process completely new to uh, you, uh, Vidya Ji, Sharada Ji, and Shaila Ji? Uh, no, Asuji, I'm in AVSC Vivekananda. Okay, okay. So, I'm I'm in Tota Pre group, Venkat Ji's group. Oh, Venkat's AVSC, group. AVSC, okay, yeah, wonderful, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Venkat is my good friend. <laughs> yes, yes. So wonderful. Let's begin with the prayer. Um, uh, Babuji, would you like to start yeah. with the prayer? Yeah. Yeah. Om Shri Satguru Devaya Namaha Sada Shiva Samarambham Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Paryantam Vande Guru Paramparam Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bunatu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejas Vinavadita Mastu Ma Vid Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Narayana Samaram Bham Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmada Charya Paryantam Vande Guru Paramparam Shrati Smriti Purananam Alayam Karunalayam Namami Bhagavat Padam Shankaram Loka Shankaram Manaji, would you please chant Guru Brahma? Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha, Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha. Murtiji, Akhanda Mandala Karam, can you chant please? Akanda mandala param, Vaptam mena chara charam, Tatpadam darshitam mena, Tasmai shi guru venama. Thank you, everyone. Um, Srinivas Murthy ji and Mane ji joined a little late. Um, so we have with us Vidya ji, Sharada ji and Shaila ji who have joined this group newly with Upadesha Saram. A warm welcome to everybody. Um, so we have uh, Babu ji, Srinivas Babu ji with us and uh, Mane ji, Dayanand Mane ji and Srinivas Murthy ji who have been uh, coming to this AVSC for a long time. So it's a pleasure to have all of you together to have an extended family, expanded family rather. <laughs> and uh, warm welcome. So the text that uh, we are beginning from today is uh, Upadesha Saram. I think uh, and Prabhuji has made it easy by giving talks on Upadesha Saram, the links of which we have shared. Uh, so typically AVSC session will consist of opening prayers, a discussion, and then the closing prayers with 
nididhyasa or vedantic meditation and closing prayers finally so um, let's uh, would uh, would uh, any of you like to say anything vidya ji shaila ji shaila ji before we begin the actual thing actual uh, text murti ji can you turn on the camera if possible and if it's okay please turn on your cameras so that the discussions if we see each other discussions would be um, much uh, better but if you have constraints uh, there is no compulsion okay if there is nothing to be added let's begin then um, with uh, with the text itself uh, so the we will take up the first four talks and prabhu ji has made all the talks of upadesha saram uh, short so it's much easy for us to go through it and once we have gone through it uh, we will come and share our understanding and also present questions if we have any doubts or even if we want to highlight something some specific point we can uh, state questions about it so that it will get into a discussion within the group now uh, anyone in the group or rather everyone in the group can answer and share their understanding of the questions asked in the group please do participate actively okay so who will uh, actually like to start who would like to start with the first talk of uh, upadesha saram the introduction okay i i, I yeah yeah i i may I do it you please please upadesha saram is a prakarana granta composed by bhagavan brahmana maharshi the circumstances under which bhagavan ramana maharshi composed upadesharam is an interesting story murugannar a great tamil poet and a great devotee of bhagavan ramana maharshi was com was composing tamil poetry based on a legend from skanda purana in that composition he was narrating a story which goes on like this in good old days there was a thick forest full of devadar trees called darukavana devadaru is a indian cedar found in himalayas especially you must have seen those trees when i have visited shimla and other places in himalayas it is known to have lot of medicinal multiple medicinal properties a group of ascetics were leading a disciplined and austere life there performing med meditation and other rituals they had acquired supernatural powers because of those rituals they believed that the rituals they performed were of ultimate level in the spiritual path they developed a sense of great pride in their siddhis now lord shiva known to reside in the kailash nearby uh, wanted to reorient them in the right path so shiva donned the guise of an young bright mendicant he came to darukavana along with vishnu who had taken the form of a beautiful damsel that is mendicant's wife you see mendicant is a is a religious order who do not stay in one place they would not have have their own place of residence but move from place to place along with wife and small children and go on preaching the dharma and the religion and also settle some of the minor problems that the people may have i am live on the whatever the people give it to them 
this is mendicant and this boy is a young boy bright boy with a beautiful wife the aesthetics there were enamored by the beauty of the mendicant's wife and went behind her when they returned so they saw that their wives were again enamored by the young bright mendicant now on seeing their wives being uh, uh, glam uh, having the glamour of this white i mean mendicant so they became furious using their su supernatural powers they created thunderstorms and ferocious wild beasts to scare the mendicant away but this mendicant remained fearless he slayed the wild beasts put living snakes around his neck now the ascetics realized that the mendicant is much more powerful than them so they requested him to reveal the secret of his immense powers now the mendicant replies if i tell you how i got so much powers you will follow it to get more powers no end to that it becomes en endless instead of trying endlessly to get more and more powers seek that which will give you infinite eternal bliss so the ascetics realized their folly and requested shiva to teach them the right path to liberation and the path to get established in that infinite eternal bliss murugan are the poet composed the tamil poetry up to this point now he was about to write the teachings of shiva but his pen stopped he thought that bhagwan ramana maharshi who was next to him he was a devotee of bhagwan ramana maharshi and bhagwan ramana maharshi he thought is the most eligible person to write that portion of the text so he requested bhagwan ramana to compose that great teaching of shiva so thus bhagwan ramana maharshi composed that great teaching of lord shiva first in tamil and later in sanskrit and called it upadesha saram you see bhagwan ramana maharshi has himself has called this upadesha saram meaning essence of teaching essence of all vedantic teaching this show i mean which which reveals the right path to liberation and also the path to get established in the infinite eternal of this this so therefore let us all give due importance to this text and follow the teaching of bhagwan ramana maharshi in a earnest way this text contain 30 shlokas the first six of those shlokas depict karma marga the next six shows the bhakti marga the next two show the path of raja yoga and the last 16 shlokas so shows us the path of sankhya yoga we will now quickly glance through the first three shlokas of karma marga um, and later let's pause here let's pause okay here. okay and go around hmm? yes uh, the, the introduction first talk is finished isn't it that that's we have yes. covered isn't it yeah yes okay thank you thank you wonderful summary of the first talk the introduction to the very text now let's go around and uh, first of course this is a story but there is a message in the story as well about the mendicant or the sanya young sanyasi with his beautiful wife and then um, the other sages who have meditated for decades together and acquired siddhis or supernatural extra sensory powers and perception and what is the lesson that shiva had taught them so what do we get from this story is uh, is the point that we can discuss we can uh, go around um, and uh, let's give opportunity to the people who have joined newly the atmajyotis who have joined newly would you like to share your uh, understanding of the message that 
the introduction introductory part is trying to convey uh, yes, for me uh, even though you have so much spiritual practice and gain all these powers still you have to there's a lot more to go especially with that uh, ego of spiritual ego that is the very hardest thing that's what I understand Wonderful. So, with the acquisition of certain powers that come as a byproduct of meditation or any other spiritual practice, the ego also builds up. Uh, that's what Vidyaji is saying. Uh, wonderful point. Thank you. Thank uh, you. We have to still work on it to overcome the ego, however subtle it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ji, Sharda Ji, any, any particular understanding? Yeah, Hari Om. Uh, see, like, uh, the, these ascetics, like, uh, they um, work so hard to get the supernatural powers. But, like, within a, what do you call, like, a, uh, what is that, like, no one escapes the what do you call like the worldly thing like it's their fall is just a moment by seeing this uh, beautiful uh, man or the wife there this one is gone I think like within a second like or, uh, the years of effort is gone wonderful that's great it. actually that's that's another nice point however the achievement is uh, we can we can easily slip back <laughs> slip down rather thank you uh, very much Shaila ji would you like to oh, you uh, here yes. my little understanding is like uh, the sages whatever they gain uh, the powers and other things the GVs are also like that. Whatever uh, desires, they it keeps on coming and uh, it is endless. It is uh, infinite, uh, like, sorry, finite. Uh, so that is why Shiva teaches uh, there are limitations for everything. So uh, the finite thing, uh, what is the blissful or uh, peacefulness comes through uh, going inwards the Sakshi Bhava. And the uh, ladies get attracted is the Maya of the world, whatever uh, the jeevis go outwards. So Shiva uh, gives the message here to uh, from outwards to inwards towards the uh, pure consciousness. That is my little understanding. Thank you. So wonderful. From outwards to inwards, move. Uh, move from outwards to inwards. No other thing. Anyone else? Mane ji, Murti ji, Babu ji. We have had a wonderful sharing by Vidya ji and Sharda ji and Shaila ji. Would anyone else like to share? Yeah, the ascetics there were performing meditation and other rituals of the high order. They are all only karma. Karma will not will lead to only a version of karma, and uh, it does not. You are uh, going already to the shlokas. <laughs> Let's hold. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you? We, uh, no, it, th there is nothing wrong in that. It is very valid. But then keep something for the shlokas. <laughs> 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 you already gone to the first shloka, second shloka. <laughs> yes. So I, I will. I'll go ahead. Yes, please. No, yeah. no. Let Babuji would. Uh, would you like? No, no, no. Like no, 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 sir. No, no, whatever, really. Okay. Okay. I so, understand. So, 
uh, Shiva says to the sages, the getting power, more power will not end. After getting some power, you want more and more and more. There is uh, no end to this. So uh, that will not achieve your uh, ultimate goal. You should get a blissful life, a permanent happiness. That is the aim or uh, freedom. That is uh, moksha. If you have liberation. Those things are most important. And you should uh, concentrate on that instead of these powers and other uh, minor things in this uh, petty world. So that is why Shiva teaches them how to get that ultimate realization. And it is not possible through karma also in the next uh, sloka he says. This is my understanding. Thank you. Babuji, back to you. Would you like to share anything no, in the no, introduction? No, sir. That, that, no, sir. That's all. <laughs> Any other any other point you can get? I'm sure you'll get oh, many points. Mm. Yeah, but at Murti, this point of time, huh? I'm not. Murti ji, any anything that you would like to share Ravin. on the introduction only, please. Ravin, from the introduction point of view, uh, he, so he, he appeared uh, that Lord Shiva to say that whatever that uh, uh, this, uh, you do your puja or whatever the karma you do, it gives only a temporary happiness where you opt for some uh, expectation. So, but real uh, uh, inner uh, happiness is within you, but you are just uh, uh, going outside to get it. But it is only a temporary. But the, actually, you should desire for the the permanent bliss where it is within you. That's what the uh, finally. So let's explore this point that when Shiva comes in the form of a youthful sannyasi and uh, how how does his very advent expose the limitation of extra powers gained by the rishis through decades of meditation practices. The very incident of the advent of uh, Shiva as a young sage with a beautiful wife, um, how does it expose the limitations of um, of the sages, uh, I mean the the powers of the sages. Anybody? It's a discussion. Hmm. Would anyone like to uh, share? It is in the introductory talk only, not uh... all right. Let let's uh, approach it from one more angle. Now, what happened when the rishis were upset and they tried to fight? the young sage who was who, uh, Shiva who came in the form of a young sage with their powers. They created thunderstorms, they created uh, a swarm of bees. And that's that's what the story says, isn't it? Yeah. Now now that is obvious that is obviously a tremendous uh, supernatural power when compared to powers of ordinary human beings, jivas yes. like uh, us. So, um, in, in the situation that emerged from that attack, 
using supernatural powers of meditation by the sages on the young sannyasi, what happened? Everybody is muted. Nobody would like to share. Vidya ji, Shaila ji. Uh, no, Shaila like it's ji. just, yes. Uh, it's just a futile, like, um, it's, there will always be a super, uh, like, um, higher power than whatever mm -hmm. is there. Like, when you look at the creation also, because uh -huh. that's why man is behind that. <laughs> whatever you see, uh, like, the salary I get is, like, um, I feel like it's uh, more... But I always find a person who gets more salary than me, like uh, with my qualification. So there will always be that one, like uh, to just to show that, like uh, uh, what you call, like you don't get satisfaction. <laughs> Wonderful. Like so, it. however much powers I gain, or position I gain, or however much I achieve in life there will always be many more people, at least one of them we can find, but we can find many more people who have achieved more than my, my achievements, isn't it? That's one part very nicely brought out by uh, Shabdaji. Now, when Shiva says, if we go to the next point, when Shiva says, uh, if I teach you how to get power, uh, the powers I got, you will seek more power. There is no end to it. Yeah. Why, why is there no end to it? I can expand to any limit, isn't it? Psychically. The powers can be infinite. Mm. So we cannot read that infinite power. We cannot gain it. No, the powers can be infinite. Yeah. So why does uh, Shiva say there is no end to the power? Which means in, in another way, can we term it as no end to expansion of consciousness or thinking mind? <laughs> So is there is there an end or no end to the expansion of conscious uh, the human mind or con individual consciousness? No end. No, no. You have to, we have to give the reason why. There is uh, Shiva made that statement. If I tell you how to get my powers. There is no end to your power, <laughs> isn't it? Now, you can't repeat what she was said. <laughs> you have to tell why. <laughs> the, the end means I acquire some more power, let us say. Uh -huh. Then I feel I have got more power than you. Then someone, uh -huh. somebody will get much more than that. So like okay. this, it goes on. <laughs> hmm. So where is the limit? What is the limit or where is the limit? Nice point. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Vidya ji, you want to say something? There is no limit. It's empty. Why? Because we can't measure the vastness of this universe and we can't, uh, you don't know where is the end or anything. Wonderful. So is there a is there a boundary we can see to the universe? No. Let alone the no. universe, even to the city that we live in. No. Uh, we can only see the boundary in the map. <laughs> Physically, we can't see, isn't it? So, our ex if we go by trying what uh, trying to expand bigger or larger than myself as I am today, will I ever meet the end or fulfillment? impossible because what is the universe? Universe is Ishvara's creation. Ishvara is infinite. Agreed? 
So when Ishwara or the Lord, the creator is infinite, his creation, which is the form of Ishwara, is also infinite. Unlike the human creation, because the human being's intellect is finite, the creation or the invention by a human intellect, oh. however grand it is, is also finite. Oh. Does that uh, logic hold good? So, when, when, when we seek physical or psychological, physical, not physical expansion, but psychological expansion, there is no limit because the, the end to the universe or the boundary of the universe is never seen. We cannot put a boundary to the creation, creator's creation, creator's work. So trying to acquire more powers, more acquisitions, whether it's uh, physical power or psychological power, there will be no end because the universe itself is vast. If we try to outsmart the universe, which is a form of a creator, it will mean that we are trying to outsmart Ishwara's intelligence, the creator's intelligence. Alva. So, uh, first thing that we said, the advent of Ish uh, Shiva himself in the form of a young sage who showed that he was immune to the extra powers that the meditative sages had is directly a lesson in limitation of the power because whatever power I have individually, I will always find another person who has more powers than me. Second, even if I don't have any, if even if I don't find anybody with another power because of my wherever I am in the position I am, and I work on my expansion. Expansion here means expansion of individual consciousness. Even then, I will not achieve fulfillment in that direction because there is no end to it. So when Shiva says, you will, if I tell you my powers, you will never reach the end. It means that his powers are infinite indirectly, not reachable. Not reachable as an individual, as a jiva. Any other sharing? Would you like to anybody? Okay. So shall we move to the first shloka? Shall we? Yeah, please. Select? Can you please yeah. chant the first shloka? Yeah. Karturagnaya Prapyate Palam Karma Kim Param Karma Tajadam Agnaya by the ordain of by the decree of Kartru the creator Prapyate one attains Palam the fruits of one's actions Kim how Karma action is Param is supreme Tat Karma that action, Jadam, is inert. By the order of, by the decree of the creator, fruits of actions are attained. How then can actions be supreme? No, actions are not supreme. Actions are inert. You see, Kartru here, Kartru Ragnaya. Kartru means Karta, the doer. 
but here we understand Kartru as the creator. So uh, that is one thing to be taken note of. I'm uh, uh, handing over the form to our mentor Vasuji to explain this. No, we, we can discuss this. Uh, we can go and yeah. round and discuss. You can you can share uh, Babuji. Please, if you want to pause, take and then resume sharing. Take your time, relax, please. Here, the true doer, the creator, because individually we cannot do anything, even a small thing. Prabhuji says, like preparing a cup of tea, we require tea powder, milk, sugar, water, uh, heat, providing yeah. medium even for that. And uh, the uh, we we do just mixing or heating and all these things. Even for doing any action, like even uh, bending my little finger, I have to be uh, uh, breathing. My uh, blood circulation, digestion, everything should be going on. My I should be healthy. For me to breathe, there should be air. For a the stratosphere should be present, earth should be present for the stratosphere, and for the earth to be present, the sun should be there, the entire Milky Way should be there, the Virgo should be there, Laniakia should be there, the entire universe should be there. So, the uh, contribution of the universal act, uh, uh, actions is very, very high compared to my contribution in preparation of tea. So here, that's why when when it's here, it is Kartru means it is taken as the creator, that is Vishwa, Vishwa Deva. Thank you, Babuji. Does anyone have any questions related to this first shloka? Kartra Ragnaya Prapyate Palam Karma Kimparam Karma Tajadam. By the will or the ordain of the Creator, the fruits of actions are achieved. How then is action supreme? Action is inert. That's the meaning that uh, Babuji explained of the shloka. He gave an example of who made a, the cup of tea. Yeah, here, uh, there is a question like, why the action is uh, termed as inert? But when the action is, itself is uh, like a movement. Mm. Why it is... Uh, huh. Why it is it inert? inert? What what yeah. would you what, what is what would you like to say, Sharda Ji, about it? Inert just... means like yeah yeah. Go ahead, please. Yeah, like see, um, when from the point of uh, view of the creator, the action of the jiva is uh, inert. Or like mm. there is no part of jiva in uh, doing the action. Okay. Yeah. The action of the jiva. Can mm. you can you share your understanding of what jiva means in your understanding? Jiva is the individual consciousness. Okay. Uh, like um, he. he the jiva feels separate from the ah, so individual creator. consciousness, consciousness. Uh, that is the individual consciousness that gets reflected in the individual the in individual yeah all right and the mm -hmm. individual along individual consciousness what makes action possible can individual consciousness act by itself For example, yeah, like uh, the, the if you take if you take the desires uh, arise, like the when you 
take the actions the desires arise the mm. vasanas mm. so that will propel the action yeah so that's the part that's the the desires um the desires are required to act that to is act. one mm. Mm. okay then with the desires can only with the desires can can the individual act what makes actions possible desires are where no desires are in the mind desires the subconscious the mind, mind uh, yeah so can they, we they have keep... desire can we have desires without action can no. desires remain no. as desires no 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 like it's a cycle like that's what uh, makes a jiva like uh, we have action then there is a uh, result then we the impression mm. is stored that will lead mm. to further action Correct. so this is a cycle this is a it's cycle, a cycle. So, so why question... it is termed as inert like i just all right so that's what we are trying to get through uh, mm. that point now do we do we all right so if if there is a thought or a desire mm. how many of our desires have resulted in in the fruits in the fructification or realization of the desire it's very less unless yeah. we take we can okay. take all that wonderful so there is something there is there is a desire there's a thought that is required as a source for action a starting point for action but action cannot be achieved by thought alone isn't it do you yeah. are we are yeah. we in agreement logically yeah. Yeah. now what there is something that makes the thought get converted to action results in an action what <clears throat> makes the action complete there is something else that makes the action complete desire there's Desire some support held. Held. to take okay. the action we have the supporting medium ha huh. what is the supporting medium the universe itself is the supporting medium the universe itself is the supporting medium through okay okay that is uh, thought agents there is thought there is electricity i mean there is the medium does it result in an action in is individual really? action i mean we are not talking of the river flowing you know the sun shining uh, the air uh, you know moving that is a universal action Uh, the, here the question sharda ji's question is individual action yeah. so building... now the limitation that the first shloka is talking about is karma kim param karma tajjadam which karma individuals karma okay. individuals okay. action is limited and it is inert isn't it so yeah it is uh, that something part... needed to complete the action of an individual apart from the desire or the thought if all thoughts get converted into action then it will be a chaos isn't it yes. how many thoughts we get and how how many of them do we convert into action suppose i am angry with uh, with somebody and i want to punch them will i go and punch them no like will... only those actions which can fructify the, that will only happen correct like the phala what is there like mm. okay uh, so so let's say there is electricity mm. what is needed for electricity 
to turn into light. Instrument. What is that instrument? That is the bulb. bulb. The resist, okay. Resist. Yeah. All right. So there is a source of action which is the desire and the thought. What is the instrument that is required for action to convert thought into action in the case of an individual? Yeah, that is the body-mind uh, ah. complex that is needed. So now, intellect. now, action happens through <laughs> the body-mind complex, mm -hmm. which is physically the physical body. Action happens through the physical body, right? Mm -hmm. Now, is the body unlimited or limited? It's limited. It's limited. Is the body inert or active? It's not active. Active when? By itself? No, no. When the Chaitanya, uh, yeah. The, the physical body matter. Mm. The body is matter, no? Mm. Is it inert or is it alive? Matter by itself, body by itself. Matter by itself is not alive. Yeah, ah, that's something. So yeah, the now, Chaitanya needs. Ah, there, there is now it, the matter, the bulb by itself will it give light without electricity? No, electricity, electricity has to flow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So body by itself is inert. It is. If we have to use a very harsh word, it is dead matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it gains sentience. It's given life by consciousness. Mm -hmm. Alwa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, unless the universal consciousness reflects in the reflecting media of the individual, the individual is a dead matter. So when the instruments of action are inert, by action also becomes inert because the individual is not the doer. Who is the doer? Mm -hmm. Who is the provider of electricity? Mm -hmm. The electric current. I mean, who is the provider of uh, light in the bulb? Mm. No doubt, electricity uses the bulb. Mm. So, for an action, two things are required. Consciousness and instrument of action. Mm. In between, of course, we add human desire through the mind. Now, when the instrument of action is inert, will action, how can action be enlivened or supreme? In that sense, yeah. So, karma can mean action. Karma can also mean the karmic impressions. Sanchita. Prarabdha Agami, the three aspects, that which comes to us, the fruits of our, or karma can also mean, ayo, it's my karma. What do we say? It mm. means it's the fruit of what I have done. So it can mean multiple things. By and large, in all ways, karma is inert because Karma is powered by the source, which is consciousness. Mm. Everything downstream from the reflected consciousness, intellect, body, mind, and the objects of the world, all of them are considered objects mm. in Vedanta. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we can perceive them. Anything that we can see are objects. Now, if we, cons if we consider body as an object, is it inert or is it, 
is it sentient? Inert only. So all objects are inert. But because of the presence of individual consciousness or reflected consciousness, both we are using both of them as synonyms, they are body gets sentience, body becomes alive, mind gets the ability to think, intellect gets the ability to decide, decision making, body gets the ability to act, kartru, the ability to act, the doership action, bhoktru, the ability to experience which happens in the mind and gnatru, the ability to know, the knower, which is the intellect. All of these have one common requirement. That consciousness must get reflected. In the reflecting medium, which is the mind or the intellect, buddhi, in this termed buddhi, essentially means uh, antakarana, which is a combination, but let's take it as the intellect. Mm -hmm. Any other points of understanding in this regard? Please share. Anybody else? Thank you, Vasudhi. Actions give happiness or unhappiness. Mm -hmm. Even when it gives happiness, it is temporary and sustains only for a limited time. It cannot give eternal bliss. Mm -hmm. So that's why it is also called as the uh, inner. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Thank you, Mahamsi. Any other uh, points of view or understanding on this? Nice, very nice question. Now there is uh, there is another reason why actions like Babuji said, uh, fruits, because they are limited, fruits of actions are also limited. Isn't it? Hmm? We are talking of Jiva's action. Hmm? Now, what makes the fruit of action limited? One is the instrument, the limitation of the instrument. Can, can the body's power be infinite? No. Can the mind's power energy be infinite? Sometime it will get tired or bored, it wants to sleep. Can we be enthusiastic all the time about anything? even about our hobbies? Mm -hmm. Or can we analyze, think all the time? Can the intellect be operating at peak efficiency all the time? Mm -hmm. So there is something that contributes to the result. I mean, uh, wh what are the factors that contribute to the result? Let's approach it that way. Whether we take an office situation, career or home or even social circles, anything. What contributes to the outcome of our action? Uh, the jiva can uh, do only karmas, mm. but the result uh, is not a, a, like uh, in its hand, in jiva's okay. hand. Ah, uh, everything results uh, uh, like the situation or uh, uh, like if you take a uh, uh, student writing an exam mm. like if he does well also uh, uh, the mind of a person who is uh, uh, doing the correction mm. or after the correction uh, the when the result comes out that also may be some uh, variations in that so mm. all count Mm. So, Bhagavan says, uh, the Jeevi's point of view, like, Jeevi should do karma, mm. 
Mm. But the fruits, uh, uh, whatever fruits come, that comes from the universe. The Lord, He knows what to give. Mm. In what way? Correct. In in how how does it? Uh... Uh, in in how how does like uh, uh, whatever intention he has. Uh, if he does any karma, like if he is uh, helping anybody else, uh, it is uh, uh, in Bhagavan, like uh, everything is surrendered to the Lord. In that uh, state of mind, if he does, mm. so that will be a, 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 that fruit also he will get. Or mm. if his intention is some other thing, like to get name and fame, that result also he may get. It depends. Okay, so whatever one gets out of a result of one one's action, it is limited, isn't it? It's not infinite. It is finite. Finite. Right? So, uh, what makes it finite? One is, of course, the limitation of the instrument of action that we have seen. Is that all? Because the jiva thinks uh, I am doing the ego I. Okay, so so there is a what? How does it limit it? In what way does the limit limitation come? In what form does that I am doing limitation take to the action? Maybe due to the ignorance also. Uh -huh. uh, so Chaitanya the... bhava. If he is in Chaitanya. The energy uh, will yeah. get limited, no? Mm -hmm. I am doing is a sense of enthusiasm, superiority, ownership, doership. How much energy can I put into, into action as an individual? That is also limited. So even the doership, the greatest of the intentions as, an ind as a separate individual, Hmm? That is limited. But there is one more factor that should not be overlooked. It came uh, as an explanation by Babuji in the first uh, introduction. Pure Chaitan, uh, pure consciousness. Uh, who made tea? Homemade tea. <laughs> yes, yes, I got. <laughs> so um, there are there are there are ex factors external to the individual effort that that aids in converting action to the result. Is there only is there only one force that is my individual effort that is going into action? No, 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 sir. Suppose we are going in a car. Is it only the engine power that drives the car at a certain speed? No. The wind resistance also contributes. The friction between the tire and the road will contribute. So if we start counting my attention as a driver of the car and pressing the throttle or the brake is what what component as an individual effort it is just one of the many components a part of it not part one of them ah, correct part of the many one of the many forces acting on the car isn't it Yes, Similarly, act, for an action to happen, is there only one force, one energy that is my effort? No, no. There are uh, multiple. 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 What do we Infinite start? number of external factors. Uh, so what happens? All of these multiple forces... For a result to happen, what should happen to those multiple forces? Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> if um, uh, let's let's take the mobile phone. Do we agree that the mobile phone signal is everywhere? All over, uh, from the antenna, it goes everywhere in the space, right? Of course, within a given range. Now, what makes those mobile signals actually, when, when do they help you make get uh, in a conversation with your friend or colleague or your spouse or child. Everywhere, uh, microwave energy or signals are scattered, isn't it? All right, TV. TV signals are everywhere. Is it only in your TV? It's there from the satellite dish everywhere. So what makes your TV being pictures? It is its ability to catch those waves. Ah, the... Go ahead, Vidya ji. Yeah. We need to tune into that signal. Tune, tune in, but fundamentally tuning means what? those signals must converge into that point of action for the TV to beam pictures, isn't it? If they diverge, the signals are everywhere. They are divergent. What does tuning do? It makes it converge into the point of action. So when do we get the result? We get the result when my individual effort and the environment's forces converge at a point. In the axis of action. If my action is to go from point A to point B, and there's a wind blowing somewhere and that takes it from point B along the line. There is a line between point A and point B, the starting and the destination. So what is the result that will come? It will come at the convergence of all the forces along with all the external forces along with my individual effort. My effort is called Purushartha. External, quote unquote external. All the universal's effort and the other, other forces that come and act, what are they in general? There are many Ishara. forces, but there are many forces, but a few of them converge. Isn't it? If all the forces converge, what happens? <laughs> <laughs> what will happen? The action will blast. Does it happen practically and experientially? Mm -hmm. No, isn't it? out of infinite compassion to the individual, the creator converges a few forces of the infinite number to the extent that the jiva can handle. And what is that called? What is that convergence called? Jiva. Not Jeeva. In terms of result, action and result. We are talking of action and result. You can give many names. Grace. Grace. Okay, grace, but from the individual perspective? No, from, from the 
Ishwara or the universe? Ishwara, grace is the underlying thing, yes. It is the prarabdha ah, karma. Wonderful. <laughs> Isn't it so? Hmm? Yeah. If, if I have all the intention and it is not there in my prarabdha to get that result, will it converge? No, it won't converge. So the result is the culmination of or a convergence of individual effort and prarabdha. In other words, multiple forces converging at one point according to my own deed. And what is prarabdha? Is it all of the karma? No. What happens no, it's if a I... part of the... Yeah. Ah, Sorry. Why does Ishwara give a part of the karma? Because I can't handle all of it together at one time. Isn't it Ishwara's compassion, Guru's compassion... That he gives only yes. little by little. Does a mother pump in every all the food in, in the plate to the child's mouth at one time? He will give little by little, isn't it? To the extent that the little child can chew. We mm -hmm. are all like children. We can chew only a little bit of karma. We can't show more, more than that. <laughs> so, our Sanchita is huge. But Prarabdha is in quantities and quality to the extent that we can handle. And that is given by the intelligence of Ishwara who knows how, each in, how much each individual can handle. And therefore, limited result is not a limitation. It's the compassion of Ishwara. <laughs> Isn't it so? If we wanted infinite results, then all the Sanchita should have collapsed into the axis of individual effort and action. Now, prarabdha can converge later or earlier along the force of action, isn't it? So, action fruits may get delayed or come earlier. A quantity and time, both can get altered. But the important thing to note is when individual effort, at the point at which individual effort meets our own prarabdha karma, which, which appears as other forces, in nature, there is the result, both in quality and quantity. Mm. Sorry, I've been talking too much and anybody has to... Any any questions? Any any other points of view? Please share. So, what constitutes the result is no doubt individual effort plus our own karma. We are limited as it is by. Because of prarabdha, we are limited. But even though uh, we are limited, our uh, intention is to get uh, a bliss. There is a permanent bliss that is a in inner. But we don't know that the bliss is inside. We always opt for uh, outside. Then we do karma, uh, whatever is through vasana, and thinking that. We get, uh, uh, of course, for that, whatever the result comes, good or bad. So, we feel, uh, if it comes good, we feel that uh, we are happy. So, but again, uh, that that will not stay for long period. 
again we jump from one desire to other desire other desire to other desire but ultimately our inner this one is that that you are <coughs> instead of limited you want to become unlimited and to get everything the the, the inner force is to get the to know or to uh, enjoy that absolute bliss but uh, we are uh, because of uh, uh, agnana we we don't know that bliss is inside we always up or outside that's why we do a hard work whatever the prarabdha karma and thinking that i will be happy with the external objects but in reality it is inside that that is the main, uh, uh, the, the um, that is the actual uh, uh, thinking to in in this line that is what the uh, wonderful yes so nicely summed up the very first shloka huh? why is karma limited so it is obviously limited so because we are going on in a cycle hmm? never ending cycle shaila ji any any thoughts any point any understanding or any questions on this part Sir, thank you. Yes. Vidya ji. No. Mane ji, would you like to share anything? No. The, the, all individuals try to get the happiness outside. It's a common uh, view of everybody. Uh, none of us know initially that the bliss and ha happiness is within us. So we never take our mind inward. We always make it outside and even the indriyas are made like that to focus outside only. <laughs> so by practice of uh, this sadhana only, we have to change our views and come back uh, inward to get that Treasure. It is not available outside. That is the firm understanding one should get and reverse our actions. Thank you, Maneji. Yeah, Vidyaji wanted to say something. I think did you unmute and want to say something? Babuji, any any other thoughts, any other idea? Oh, no, sir. You have beautifully explained everything. Okay. So, um, we are uh, nearing the end. So, what we can do is um, we can uh, instead of starting the second shloka, we have 10 minutes left. We can close with the closing prayers and do the niridhyasa and end. Hmm? Or shall we do that? Is everyone okay? Okay, okay, Vasuji. Yes. Yeah. So I'll start. I start with Asatoma, Sadgamiya. Asatoma, Sadgamaya, Tamasoma, Jyotir Gamaya, Mrityorma, Amrutam Gamaya, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Any of uh, Vidyaji, Shailaji, or Shandaji, would you like to chant Purnamadaha? Anyone, please? Purna Madha, Purna Purna Mudachati, Purna Sia Purna Madaya, Purna Meva Vashishati. Vidyaji, 
शारदा जी वुड यू लाइक टू चैंट आत्मा दर्शनम वुड यू नो आत्मा दर्शनम ब्रह्मा दर्शनम ब्रह्मा दर्शनम सत्य दर्शनम नानु नाने बुद्ध नानला प्रभु जी इस महामंत्र वुड विद्या जी लाइक टू चैंट इट प्लीज आई डोंट नो एनी ऑफ दैट मंत्र ऑल राइट मूर्ति जी थैंक यू वी विल व्हाट वील डू इज वील पब्लिश द प्रेयर्स इन द ग्रुप ओपनिंग प्रेयर्स एंड क्लोजिंग प्रेयर्स वी कैन लुक एट इट विकी Murti ji can you just chant maha mantra Antar jyoti bahir jyoti pratyaj jyoti parat para jyoti dev jyoti ayam jyoti atma jyoti shivo ham देह मन बुद्धि सच्चिदानंदात्मशिव नानुनाने शिवोहम 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 आई एम नॉट द बॉडी आई एम नॉट द माइंड आई एम नॉट द इंटेलेक्ट आई एम एक्सिस्टेंस कॉन्शियसनेस ब्लेस आई एम शिवा शिवा आई एम शिवाया समस्ता सुखिनो लोका समस्ता सुखिनो लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्तो ओम शांति 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 श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः